The Mitch LaFon and Jeremy White Show. The Mitch LaFon and Jeremy White Show. Available wherever you stream. Catch up on past interviews and episodes on demand now. Subscribe so you don't miss any of it. We are speaking with the one and only uh, drummer extraordinaire, Manu Kache. As we say here in Montreal, uh, bonjour, Manu. Comment allez-vous? How are you? Très, très bien. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a great thrill for me because I have been listening to uh, Genesis and Peter Gabriel nonstop since November. I've been on this like six month, seven month tear and just listening to um, the rhythms and the sounds. And, and what I find beyond their voice is is the, 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 the soundscape that is created from the drums and the rhythms okay. that, that okay. it's, it's terrific. Um, but let me get started with our local guy, Daniel Lanois. Uh, yeah. from, uh, I think he's, he's from Toronto, right? Well, he was born in in uh, Hull, Quebec, I believe. But he's he's okay. certainly our our Canadian hero. Uh, let me start yeah. with him first, and then we'll talk about uh, the scope, and we'll talk about some uh, some of the tour dates that you're doing, and of course, we'll talk about Peter. Um, talk to me about Daniel, because he he is revered as one of the greatest producers. He's mm -hmm. certainly well respected in Montreal and in Quebec. Uh, talk to me about working with him. That was my first time actually uh, abroad because uh, before joining the uh, recording uh, for the So album, I was mainly doing sessions in France and, and, and playing with French artists. Right. So when I got there, I went, I went to uh, Bath at the time, like two hours away from London at Peter's studio, which was the first studio before the Real World Studios. Right. And then I met everyone there, Tony Levin, you know, uh, David Sanctus, of course, Peter. David Rhodes and Daniel, and it was very nice for me because I couldn't really speak that English that I'm able to do now. So it was a bit hard for me to understand everything. And Daniel was very helpful on this because he speaks a little bit of French. Right. And I didn't know who he was. You know, I, I knew he was the producer. So we start recording and then <clears throat> it went pretty fine. We start with that first track, which is uh, Don't Give Up, yep. which I'm just like very uh, uh, quiet on the, on the hi-hat and then turn on the... On, on the rest of the drums, but it's it's quite quiet on that on that track. And then we keep on going with, uh, um, I think it was in your eyes, second or, th or third track recording. And just to let you know, I mean, I was not used to work uh, abroad, which means in France, because it's a small country. And of course, when you sell abroad, when you sell records at the time, uh, you sell in French countries. Right. Which means, which means, budget-wise, it's it's not that big. All of a sudden, I'm with Peter Gabriel, which is a big name, and he says all around the planet. So we got time, and I'm not used to that. Which means, like for a drummer, I had to, you know, I had to go like in three hours. I could do two tracks, and it had to be quite nice. In this case, and Daniel came came to me and said, "Manu, you know." Don't worry, we got time. We're going to rehearse it. Um, uh, when I was playing some some uh, some drums along the tracks, he said, "Oh, I like this part a lot. I like these two bars. Let's develop on this." So it was very very nice to me and uh, <clears throat> making me, making me like you know relax and uh, and easy going. So we worked together quite uh, a, a long time without Peter saying anything. And then Peter came in and apparently was like he was happy of what we done so far and of course because that da daniel was speaking a bit of french we got close you know we got close and 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 i was asking him question about you know how you produce uh, abroad because you know i'm french and in in paris or in france you don't work the same way and he said to me uh, after like three or four days he, that i remember that sentence he came to me and said you know manu uh since we work together i'm telling you now today you're gonna work with the whole planet Right. So I thought like, okay, but I didn't know really what it meant because <laughs> that was my, you know, first sessions abroad and didn't really know Daniel. So trusted him, make me confident. So we keep on working on, on the album. And of course, you know, uh, the success of this album and then the tours. Yeah. And, of, and, and what I like with Daniel is like, <clears throat> he was going for more that you can provide, which means you're playing a track, you're playing along, you do a groove, you do some ideas, creative, whatever on the terms, symbols, and then all of a sudden it comes to you and say, you see those two bars, 
that's what we should aim for. So you just concentrate and try to understand what he, what, what he says. I mean, just like, I like those two bars, it's nice, nice groove, blah, blah, blah. But that's not what he, he meant. He, he meant something else like in depth. Right. Just to try to go further down and uh, dig in, you know, what you provide as, as a creative part, which I did and I got used to that. And I, and I, and I could say nowadays, you know, like I mean 34 years later, that it helped me to develop my own style, my own signature because of that, of trying to go further down and just like, okay, this is a nice groove, this is a nice idea, let's go further down. Is, is Danielle's approach then a little bit like Mutt Lang, where it's really down to the, to the minutia, to those fine, fine details? Is he sort of a, is he our Canadian Mutt Lang? <laughs> it could, yeah, could be. Yeah, really? absolutely. Yeah, very, very, you know, like uh, precise, but it's not even that word. It's like, uh, uh, oh, I, I don't know. The What's word the word in, in French? Raffiné? Meticulous. 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 Easy. <laughs> All the big words in English are the same in French, I, I find. <laughs> um, that's interesting. Well, okay, let me let, let me get into this, and then and then we'll we'll talk about uh, the scope and and uh, the Conservatoire de Paris and all this other stuff. Um, since you got down to being so meticulous, and you're 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 a jazz drummer, and of course in jazz drumming the cymbals are some of the most important thing. I mean, you're not a jazz drummer if you don't know no. how to ride a cymbal. I mean, you're, no. you're just not. I, but but I don't think I'm a jazz drummer anyway. But go for it. <laughs> well, I mean, but but you do have a love of jazz. Yeah, I, I think I like jazz, but I mean, if you talk jazz, I mean, you talk swing, you, you talk bebop, you right. talk hard bop, which I, 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 can't, I can't deal with that. I mean, you got like amazing drummers in this world, you know, like uh, Jeff Stein Watts, for instance, for me, which is like a huge, amazing jazz drummer. I can't, I can't go there. I mean, I, I could, you know, just, okay, I got a little bit of swing with symbols and kind of, with, you know, right symbol and, and the attitude, but I, I, I wouldn't define myself as a jazz player. Really? Okay. Well, okay. Hold on. I'm going to back it up because there's all kinds of stuff going on here. I mean, you look at who you've played with, uh, from Sting to Tracy Chapman to Peter. Uh, you've gotten uh, merit awards from from the French government, and you've got all kinds of stuff. What kind of drummer do you see yourself as? Because I mean, I you're not you're not a schmuck. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know, I don't know. I think I. I don't know. I have no idea. I think I'm coming from the classical area, which means right. you got to open your ears a lot to what's happening around you musically. And then, you know, I turn into pop music mainstream in France that I met Peter, which is like the English side of it, then American, and then a bit of jazz with Jan Garbarek and, you know, with the ECM label. Mm -hmm. Because all of that is like what I used to listen to. And I would, it's hard for me to describe what type of drummer I am. I think I'm, uh, I, no, I, 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 it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. Okay, so let, let me just get back here, Jen, then just real quick on the Peter Gabriel thing. You, you come into the band, you go on tour, you, you have all these successful tours, and of course you have to play songs like Intruder and, and other songs from uh, the Melt album, for the lack of a better <laughs> word, that have no symbols. You're right. How difficult is that for you? Because you, you, I can. I was watching Secret World uh, live in Greece yesterday, or Athens, yeah, and you're doing POV, intruder, and you're yeah. just sort of staring at the drum. You're just like, I'm not gonna, I'm, just, I'm not gonna do this. <laughs> it's it's very frustrating. I mean, but right. you know, I mean, you have to respect that track. That track, I didn't record it. I remember no. when I got in the studio for this So album, Peter mentioned that the record before, or maybe the one before, the one before, with Jerry. It, he said to Jerry, don't use any symbols at all. Right. And, and he said that to me and I said, okay, Peter, but the thing is, I'm, you got, I got splashes and crashes and, and I love the tone of symbols. And actually, I used the symbols and I, I remember David Rose coming to me and saying, you know, finally he likes it. But of course, when, as you mentioned, when we played Intruder, for instance, I did, I did have to respect the track and the recording of that track. So I'd, it was not easy for me because it's not like natural, but I just played what I had to play for him to be able to sing the way he sings yeah. and, and get the vibe of the whole track. Otherwise, you know, you don't respect it. No, and, and, and it becomes frustrating. Of course, uh, you, you, you are coming, uh, you're coming up to the Festival International de Percussion de Lausanne du 7 yep. au 10, uh, du 17 au 19 juin. 
mm -hmm. uh, the uh, International Percussion Festival in Luzanne. Uh, talk to me just quickly about that and what, what can fans expect? Because you've also got a few other shows coming up this year. Uh, what can I'm fans coming, expect from your shows? Yeah, I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming from my band, which is called The Scope. So this mm -hmm. is the, the last album has been doing just pre-COVID time, because now we say pre-COVID and post-COVID. <laughs> yeah. so, so, and we know what it is. So, I mean, yeah, we recorded that album in France before the COVID, and then we toured a bit, then we had to stop, of course. Right. And so that's uh, pretty much electro jazz, but this yeah. is not you know, swing, but it's electro jazz with uh, sequences. And I hope this is going to work in Lausanne, that we got a video screen behind that, because I had some featured... Uh, guests on the album, I hope I'll be able to show the audience uh, the guests. And then, of course, playing live is very different from, you know, recording an album. So it's more in, much more improvisation, much more freedom. Uh, the structures, the change a bit from the, the, the recording, from the studio album. Right. So, and then I really try to get the audience with him, which, we, which means I'm sharing moments. I'm not going to tell you exactly all of it, but we sharing moments, which means like I take them to a certain area and, and then share the music the same way. And I love it because, you know, most of the time you, you go and perform and it's great. People are very happy to see you and to listen to you. And, uh, and, and it's a kind of a passive way. They applause and smiling and tap with the feet, but that's it. This, we, we try to get a bit, you know, further, you know, than just to have them with us, like if they were on stage with us. So I love this part because it's at the end of the gig. And it's, it's brilliant because uh, you can really see people and, and hear them. And, uh, and you're like, you know, like you're hundreds on stage. That's great. It's great. Uh, just quickly talk to me about, about doing the solo records, because of course, and, and I'll just keep repeating it, you, you've played with Tears for Fears, for Sting and Peter Gabriel. I mean, the list is just, but there's got to be a certain satisfaction to doing uh, un statique and the scope and uh, yeah. touchstone. Uh, talk to me about yeah. that. It's been my 10th album. So I'm telling you, when I started it, I had the, the opportunity and the chance and the privilege to do it with the ECM. Right. So as you said before, and I agree with you, I'm more jazz than rock with the ECM right. label, of course. Right. <laughs> but it's a kind of type of jazz, like, you know, like the North or European jazz. Right. And because I did some album with, with Jan Gabarek, and I had the great relation at the time. And I, I remember telling him, you know, Jan, I'm, I, I, I wrote some music, some demos, but I, I don't know what to do with it. And he said to me, you know, just go to Manfred Eicher, he's the head of ECM, and propose them. I said, okay. And it's always very difficult when you've been a Simon for years, and especially Simon with huge artists, because <laughs> yeah. you feel that small because you know i mean you you my my role is to bring the best of myself as a drummer in in what I, they, they're expecting but then writing music is a different ball game and of course you know my first instrument is piano but i'm not as good as those guys you know writing so anyway i go to, to manfred Eicher and say okay manfred this is what i've done for you know many years what do you think i said yeah it's, it's really interesting let's let's record it with with a band okay so that's how i started and then all of a sudden you become a leader because uh, you're in charge you, you wrote the music you got some musicians and you say oh no you I, I, i'd let you to do that bit and actually me doing for many years French sessions and artists live and then abroad. I think it helped me to know how to talk to people and, and to get things like I told you at the beginning of this interview with Daniel, just try to get things that you're not aware of in a nice way, in a nice way. Let's say, okay, I, I love what you do, but can we go? Because I've heard that and I, and I love it. And then and then it's great because it's an exchange thing, you know, it's, it's very interactive and it's beautiful at the end of the day. But it took me many years to, to go there. I could, I, you know, thinking of it, if I think of my career before, I could have done it, you know, 20 years before. I was not ready for that. I think in, 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 in French, we, you know, we say, j'ai fait mes classes. Right. You know, you, like you, when you... You paid your dues. Exactly. And then I think I was ready to go on my own. Is that something, because you, you announced recently, and I, I interviewed uh, Tony in April, and he had said that he, he had finished the Peter Gabriel album, and you, you said the same thing in an interview recently. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Um, no, yeah, okay, go ahead. 
<laughs> but I, 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 actually, we're not finished yet. We're going back in July to finish it. Oh, you're going back in July. Okay, so all right. Let, let me ask you quickly about that then. Uh, in terms of, of making a new record with Peter, how much of the drums are live off the floor and how much is, you know, program drums and loops? And, and do you do like, like, like we talked about Mutt Lang before, do you do like 80 takes of the drums and then you sort of comp them all together? How, how, what's the approach? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we do a lot of takes. So just for you to understand, I got three kits. I got an electronic kit right. in the big studio in that big control room at Real World because then I can, it's easier to talk and, and to, to talk about the structure, to talk about the groove that we're trying, the, the, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm with all the guys in the same room with an electronic drum. So, you know, Peter can sing. There's no problem with, with the sound. Then I got a small kit with like a lot of tape on it, like, like sounds like in the seventies right. in the back door, just, but I can see them, but I, of course I have a talk back to talk to them, but I'm very close to them. So that's the second kit. So when we, when we track, uh, the the songs I, I try first on the electronic kit, then I go to the small kit, and I go then in another room with the big kit, with the regular kit, with all my stuff. You know, everything's open. You know, live and sounding, and then we do each time we do a few takes on each kit. So when we finish with one kit, and even if Peter says, "Man, I love it. This is great. Uh, why don't we try with the big kit?" <laughs> so I'm used to that. I know. I'm going to use each kit. And at the time when we did the, the recording for So and actually for Us and Up, I mean for Us, because Daniel was there at the time, Peter had put together, which was beautiful. We don't do that anymore. What, what we call an African kit. You know, Peter is in love with African music and African artists. Yep. And traveling all around the world, he just collected a lot of stuff, a lot of percussion, and he brought them back in England. So we put up kind of a African kit with an African tambourine that I was hitting with my left foot, like a big djembe, and I put a, a bass drum pedal on it, and then other djembe's when I hit it with like a mallet. And that was part of the recording sessions at the time. And, and I remember, and Daniel and Peter were crazy about that sound, because it's very, very uh, deep. It's right. a deep, you know, it's not, it doesn't sound like a, a regular kit, but we don't do that anymore. Now it's mainly that small and big kit. And actually the electronic kit is more like to get a vibe, to get an idea of what we're going to do. And, uh, and then I go to two other kits. So, so when you're playing live then with Peter and Stings, do you use triggers? Is it just your drum? Like, I don't want to say, yeah. are you cheating, but I mean, are you no, enhancing no, no, no. the sound? No, no, I, I'm using my drums, my regular kit, and then my regular kit, you know, on each toms, on, on the snare, on the toms, and the bass drum, you have a little hole where you have the plaque right. you know, with the name of the, of the drums. So we got the idea with the technician at, at Peter's studio at, when we did the, 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 that old tour in, uh, oh, oh, the... No, Back the, to so, the front? No, no, the one no before in the, in the eighties the uh, oh the big so, tour the uh, secret world yeah thank you there you go secret world tour we man managed to have uh, jacks inside those little holes getting to a MIDI transmitter wow. and getting to a DMPC so which means when I was hitting the rim of each term or the snare. I, ha I added a second sound. You had the sound of my tom, right. full head. The acoustic sound. Exactly. Plus, if I was hitting the rim as well, you had two sounds together. That was the thing. Wow. It's like, it's like the... being an octopus. It's a... <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes. Oh, that's the, that's, the way to, that's the way to do it. All right. So let me ask you quickly then about this, uh, about this sort of upcoming album. 20 years in the making. Um, I've had, I've had a chance to have a daughter who's now 19. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> she, she represents the Peter, the Peter Gabriel, uh, lack of, uh, of yeah. album. Yeah. But, uh, do you, do you go into the studio and does he come into you and say, listen, we just did that. So tour the back to the front. It's a great album. Let's do. So part two, or do we just do something different? Like where are we going in terms of songs and music? Are, is, when is I got I, actually the way the way yeah the way it went I mean I was I remember that's very funny because 
You know, it's that world is 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 the world is uh, is very special because I was in doing the the bridge the rec the new record of Sting's rec Sting's album mm -hmm. in Italy at Sting's place. You know, at the the second lo lockdown because I think it was pissed off the, doing nothing, and we were all so I went to Italy and recorded the the that part of that album, and then I got a call from Peter saying, Manu, I got an idea. I'd like to record a new album. What do you think? Would you be on? I said, Of course, Peter. I'd love to. It's great. Okay, so uh, you know. I will talk to your manager and we fixed the, the dates and then it's fine. And then got, my manager says, okay, Manu, that's going to be those days. Are you available? Yes. Go in the studio. Very happy to be there. David Rhodes, Peter, of course, and Tony Levin and myself, just the four of us, plus engineer. And uh, it just uh, says, okay, that's what I've done so far. Listen to it and, and, and let's try to uh, play around. That's all it is. And you wow. got like, we, I think we, we cut like 19 tracks. Wow. And uh, and he got some ideas. Sometimes he doesn't have anything. Sometimes, what, from what we play, we, on, I remember on one track. I think it's called the court, C O U R T. The tempo was quite up, and he didn't. And we tried things with the electronic drum for the small kit. I didn't like it. And then finally, he says, "Okay, let's let's slow that down." But I mean, radically, and we slowed it down and. And it's just beautiful track. It sounds for me. I could be wrong, but I think it's pretty much the the, the truth. You remember the very good days of Womack and Womack, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It is mm. so funky. It's grooving, and we all had you know smiles on our faces in the studio. It was great. So as you know, once again, he had that track. He had an idea in his head. We tried it managed to respect these ideas in a way and then finally he was not happy he said okay let's do something totally different and then we came up with totally different grooves and it worked it out so that's the way it goes it's very very open very open mind wow well you know listen the uh, the so album has a dna track that came out as a bonus track uh, we'll need a whatever new album dna uh, uh, disc too why not um in terms of uh, drum solos, I'm going to ask you this, because I have always said that drum solos, drum solos are my bathroom break because they're, you know, you go see some of these hard rock bands and eh. <laughs> but yours are interesting. And when you play and when you listen to the scope, your playing is interesting and I can listen to it and I go, huh, so maybe it's not the drum solo that's not fun. Maybe it's just I wasn't listening to the right one. <laughs> what do you do to keep drum solos interesting? Because you, you, you have me completely fascinated when you play. Uh, I mean, whether Peter's there or Sting's there, when you're playing, I'm listening. I mean, thank you very much. Uh, I think, once again, come, my background is classical. So I've right. been listening to a lot of classical music. I'm a huge fan of uh, Glenn Gould. I was a huge fan of Eric Satie. So I guess, even if I can't play this, because it's very difficult, uh, I just listen and listen and listen many, many, many times. And I guess, you know, your, your brain reacts a different way. And I remember, of course, you know, the time went by. When I met Jan Gaborek, when you play with Jan, it's a, it's a very special thing with him. You play two hours on stage. The guy doesn't talk, doesn't say hi, doesn't <laughs> say goodbye. Everything is on chart. And oh, I'll chart it. Yeah, everything. Wow. And of course, you, you know, you got freedom to interpret, you know, interpretation, but everything is written. And it's, a lot, you know, everything is following. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of big work. I remember at, at the time, Eberhard Weber and Rainer Brunninghaus, the piano player, we all had a moment, which means like, you know, you want to take 15 minutes to do a solo, go for it. And I was facing this and, and Jan came to me and said, Manu, would you be okay to do a, a drum solo? I said, yes, but you know, if you want me to go for 15 minutes, that's going to be hard. So I have to, I have to, to tell a story, let's say. Yeah. So, yeah. So I remember listening back to a, the other guy, you know, the old guys, I'm not going to name all of them, but you know, like Buddy Rich and, and, and Buddy Jim Rich. Krupa and all those Every, guys. Yeah, all those guys. And technically, I'm so far away from those guys, they're just monsters. But when you listen to those guys, there's some of them are telling you a story. I mean, you could follow us something, a path. And I thought, you know, with my technical level and with my brain, I'm going to try to to show the audience a path. Right. So then, you know, I, because of doing it and redoing it, I think I developed as well a way of doing a drum solo, which not 
which is not like you know and, and, and <sighs> goodbye right. listen uh, I, I grew up on the hard rock stuff you know all your bon jovis and def leppard and all that stuff and great i mean those guys are great of there course. are some bands in that genre where a drum solo is just torturous <laughs> you're just like oh for fuck's sake stop yeah. it <laughs> but, but you know yeah I'm, I'm sorry to cut you but i think it's like an you know most of the time i really insist on this i think it's a drums like is is like an, a, a a melodic instrument yes if, if you use the toms i got splashes if you got like different tones you can mix them all together and just you know, you you tell something. I said tell a story, but you colored things, and then it's like a melodic solo. It's not just like a rhythm solo. So right. that's why that's why you know that I, I really you know try to insist on that of coloring colored things. And I don't know. It's just it's my view. Well, it's a great view. And listen, I had the same view with guitar solos, and then I heard uh, Michael Schenker, and I just yeah. went, oh. Oh. Because he's doing it like he's the, the solos are like songs onto themselves, if you know what I mean. Like there's a melody, there's a progression, and you go, I, Ah, there you go, absolutely. There you go, I agree. So, I agree. Uh, I know we're going to run out of time soon, so let me just quickly, Sorry. it's all good. Let me let me quickly ask you about about so, uh, one of the ba greatest albums ever made, Eddie Van Halen. Speaking of guitar solos and guitar heroes, said, I didn't need to buy another album after this one, I, I'm done. <laughs> wow. uh, th this wow. is it for me. Um, just quickly talk to me about that tour and, and how special it was because what are we, uh, 36 years later? Yeah, it was in 88. Remember, I was 27 at the time. I was a kid. Uh, 34. It was, it was extraordinary. I mean, the people, you know, playing those big stage, of course, fame because the album worked very well. And then the fact of playing with Tony Levin, I never met that. I knew who he was, but then, you know, that, that rhythm section was so powerful. And then from that period then we went on to doing sessions together for other artists yeah. after that but I, I think i learned a lot from that of course album but from that tour on both sides musical sides and human side well how, okay. well, how, how important is tony levin to what you do because i interviewed him in in april and it, it, it's it's like a match made in heaven that like you said the rhythm section it's i can't really imagine david or no, sorry tony without either Jerry or yourself, and I can't really yeah. imagine yourself. I mean, you can't just bring in Gene Simmons and go play bass with Peter Gabriel, right? No offense you, know what was hard, you know what was hard for me? As I told you, I was in France doing sessions when you had to play bass and, and bass drum at the same place at the same moment. All of a sudden, I get with, with Peter and Tony's in studio, and actually I do a groove with some, you know, bass drum pattern, and he's not on it. And then he listens, and, and then he plays another part and then I tried to do the same as he does but this changes and I thought okay that's not the way to go this guy is not just like a, a regular bass player is once again is he's in is stalling a vibe so let's play around that vibe instead of trying to lock with his bass lines well he's a Chapman stick player that's, that's the you're most right important. you're wrong oh, yeah forget about it uh, et on, on termine avec ça uh, tournée 2023 tour 2023 yeah. Uh, the uh, the Manu Cache experience is coming. No, um, you're, you're touring with Peter. <laughs> yeah, it is the it is the Manu Cache experience. I don't know, but we're gonna tour. We're gonna be in the U.S. in September, October. Wow, 2023. I think we're coming to Quebec on the third of September. That's what I heard. Oh, I'll, I'll email you my phone number. Third <laughs> <laughs> of September, flying to Quebec. So oh. then we're going to be in uh, North America. I, I'm so happy. You know, it's been, it's like your family. You're just like going back with your family. You're all getting, you know, of course, older, but it's fun. It's your friends, you know, and it's your uh, DNA. Yeah. And you're part of it and you created things. So you're so happy to join in again. Yeah. I, and I can't wait to see it because I, I will admit this. I have never seen Peter live because it just never worked out. Okay. I, whenever he came to Montreal, I was either in some other town or I was sick or I couldn't go or there was work. Shame. I know. So I only know you from these, li I bought all your live CDs here. I have a whole bunch of them in front of me. These, uh, <laughs> back to the front. I have, okay. I have like so, 75 of them and I've listened to everyone multiple times. So it. we need to see you on this tour. On this Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. 
I will definitely be there. Um, yeah. I could go on forever because there's so much more to cover. But and you uh, come backstage and have a drink with us, and we yes. can, you know, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, absolutely. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll write your manager and, and put my name in for that. No, but I, I really need to see this because it's 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 my regret. You know, this bands that you regret. I yeah, haven't yeah, seen the yeah. Who. I haven't seen Peter. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, you're too busy. Yeah, I know. Uh, merci bien. On, 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 merci. On, on se reparle pour une deuxième fois plus tard because there's so much to go over. So much okay. to go over. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bonsoir. The Mitch Lafon and Jeremy White Show. The Mitch Lafon and Jeremy White Show. Available wherever you stream. Catch up on past interviews and episodes on demand now. Subscribe so you don't miss any of it. <laughs>